Yes. So it's not uh, a simple situation of saying um, we need good governance, then we're going to look for good people. Everything can happen. It needs to happen in tandem. Uh, first of all, we have to prioritize on our issues. Let me give an example of how the figures that she just pointed out uh, in terms of the funds that have come in, uh, loans from China over the past 12 years. Combined, you're looking at about 500 billion. May I remind her that uh, France alone is taking over 500 billion a year, not 12 years. Uh, African Union has estimated that in order to completely build out the African infrastructure, we are going to need about a hundred billion dollars a year for the next 10 years if that were to be available that's only two years takings from france so let's be realistic it's not just china our problems are to do with the colonizers and china is just becoming yet another colonizer we must look at our pro problems from a global point of view and make sure that we have the right people qualified to, to do the job. I cannot ever emphasize enough that the capacity Africa needs is in the diaspora. Let's make no mistake about no, that. You, you, you are perfectly money. right about that. You are very correct. You are very correct about that. But let me tell you something about, uh, about France, which uh, of course it, it won't surprise you. I had a guest who was supposed to join us in this broadcast, but because of where he works, he was instructed if this conversation would have anything to do with friends, uh, we will not allow you to uh, participate in the discussion. And so he had to bow out. But the French lobby is very, very strong. If anybody thinks that the French are giving up on Africa anytime soon as they want the rest of us to believe, uh, that is a lie. It is not going to happen anytime soon. But I'm going to ask you, between the French and the Chinese, who are our lesser enemies? Madam Ambassador, both of you can take the question. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I think uh, it is my humble opinion that uh, if you were to talk about France and uh, China as roots of a tree, uh, the roots of France are so embedded, this tree is going to be impossible to shake. Whereas the roots of China, uh, we can shake them. China hasn't been as embedded in Africa, uh, and the, their roots are not as deep-rooted as the, as, the, as the French roots. So I think there is a possibility, good possibility, that we can uh, continue to uh, negotiate with, uh, with China and make sure that they do the right thing. France. We also have a chance to negotiate with uh, France because President Macron is a young man, he is progressive. I think we have a better chance of seeing some movement with Macron in power. We don't know who else is going to come behind him. But uh, so what's needed really is for us to really just stand up and, and have our leadership look France and China in the face to say, what you are doing is wrong and you need to stop. We will not tolerate it anymore. So we need to stand up and just push back because we are the victims and they are the perpetrators. Ours is an easy fight because we are coming from the point of righteousness. They are the bad guys and we need to stop them. Like I often say, we can no longer allow them to punch us and we give another kick. We can no longer allow them to punch us and then we have to apologize for them punching us. No, they are the perpetrators. We must hold them accountable. And that can only happen when we are awoken and we are no longer afraid of them because they are just as equal to us as we are to them. We need to have a critical mass that is awoken, that is ready to say enough is enough. France, you can no longer continue to colonize us. The rest of the colonizers, we know what you have been doing to us, but we must be strong enough and fearless enough to push back and tell them enough is enough. What does, uh, what is Megan's take on this? Do you think the French or the Chinese are uh, lesser enemies in Africa? So I, I think Queen Arakana has just said it all, truly and honestly. The reason everything is so focused on China right now is purely because of the, the coronavirus, this COVID-19. But the French, the roots are very, 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 very deep there. And when we talk about the, um, uh, the continuation of the colonization pact, part of that 
uh, limits your your military alliance to France. So even if you wanted to fight back, you will align with who? So as 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 I said, we need unity, and with unity, we can push France out. As far as China is concerned, China are silent assassins. They start with one. The next thing you know, there's 10 million of them. What this COVID-19 has brought awareness to that. Now, do we need to be fighting two evils or we can get one that's easy to get rid of now, which is going to be China, so we can focus on getting France out of Africa? It makes no sense. Countries in Africa speak French. You're not fr from France. You're not French. We need African dialect, African language, African money in Africa. So that $500 billion, that, and that is, as she said, yearly. How ridiculous that goes to France. And the only reason France continues to do what it does is because it will collapse without that money. So France is the devil. And China France is, is the, the devil. Right. I think you are in agreement there with Ambassador, <laughs> with Ambassador Arika, that France is uh, the biggest devil here. Uh, but with unity, we can we can deal with it. With unity, we can absolutely get rid of it. If the entire nation stands out, who are they going to come and assassinate? Nobody's coming to assassinate anybody if all of Africa stands together and says, try it. They won't try it. Well, to be honest with you, uh, I would say a good significant percentage of, uh, uh, of the African uh, population is going through some serious humanitarian issues. Um, you know, you, right next door uh, in, um, in uh, DR, I've seen uh, horror, horrific uh, uh, videos of, uh, of what is going on. Uh, you look at um, uh, the Sahel nations, uh, uh, a lot of carnage, a lot of people getting killed. Um, in a nutshell, the continent is under siege. Um, and when you look at it and say, where do we begin? To, uh, to to address these issues. Like I said, each country uh, has different challenges, but in a nutshell, when it's all said and done, make no mistake about it, the continent is under siege. And what needs to be done is for us to look at Africa from a global continental point of view. And when it's all said and done, the majority of the countries that are having issues, they are former French colonies. So let's look and say, where is the root cause of these issues? And that's really what we need to talk about. And that's what we were talking about earlier to say, um, Cameroon alone is not going to be able to fight France. Uh, individual countries cannot fight France. You understand the geopolitics probably better than I do of, uh, of Cameroon. And you know what needs to happen if Ca Cameroon is to be, and in your case, Am Ambazonia, is going to be completely free. So it's not a simple matter. It's a multifactorial issue, but let's face it, Africa is under siege. There is no question about it. The carnage that is going on in too many African countries should not be tolerated. And it is only happening because we are small economies that are easy to exploit. When we are united, like the, uh, the, my young daughter there just said, that they can mess with us if we are fighting individually. But if we all come together, it's easier for us to win the fight than if each individual country is fighting on their own. So yes, my heart bleeds uh, when, it, when it comes to what is going on in, uh, in, in, uh, in Cameroon, in Ambazonia, uh, in, in what's happening in, uh, in DRC, the, in Somalia, Djibouti, uh, the Sahel regions. It's just sad the continent is under siege. That's why there is a need for a continental approach to Africa's problems. We need a continental army. We need, uh, we need a single African currency. We need an African central bank. We need our own monetary policy. We need an African stock exchange. Those are things that should have been done a long time ago. The problem. We able to neutralize a lot of this. But it's because uh, we were divided. Why it took us 56 years to come up with the African continental free trade area. Again, those are some of the things that you can't help but just say, we're just stupid, you know, because this is a no-brainer. It should have been done a long time ago. But that is our reality. This is where we are. It is what it is. But those to whom much is given, much is expected. That's me and you. Let's realize that we need to also play our part in what goes on on the continent. We cannot sit from 10,000 miles away and complain when we can't even unite ourselves 
as Africans living in the same neighborhood. We need to realize that the change that we desire starts with me having a serious conversation with the image in the mirror and realizing that to a great extent I'm suffering from the legacy of colonization and that I need to unshackle my mind and first and foremost I must step out and unite with my brothers and sisters because united we could deal with the situation in, in Cameroon if we are united. Cameroon alone is not going to be able to push back against France. My brother, you know that as much as I do. The problem of Cameroon, yes, is partly uh, the French, but it is more than that, uh, considering that the French really don't have anything to do with the relationship between Ambazonia and French Cameroon. I think the problem that has that is in Cameroon is the inability of those who run the country to listen to the people like we have in every other country so it has resulted to the where we are today a conflict that has gone on for four years and when you talk about approaching this from the African angle we don't have an African angle the AU does nothing the international community they do nothing either. Well, they try, we say they try, but Africans, the AU, does absolutely nothing. The AU looks like a lobby, a lobby for these individual leaders. That is the African problem. If the AU was serious, they would have waded into what is going on in Cameroon to say, hey, you can keep killing the people burning their settlements, driving them into the bushes, sending them into refugee camps. The African Union has not done so. Again, you, you, your point is well taken. Uh, the issues of Africa, you would hope that the AU as a continental body, um, you know, could have some say. The, the problem with AU is that it, is, it does not have sovereignty. The African Union Charter clearly states that the African Union cannot interfere with the affairs of, uh, of the state. So they can only come in as uh, negotiators. Uh, they can try and coerce the, 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 the leadership, but AU does not have sovereignty and does not have the right to dictate what a, a nation can do. Remember, the membership, uh, at the, uh, membership to the African Union is voluntary. A leader can just decide, I no longer want to be part of the AU, and they can pull out and then there's nothing you can do. Now they're completely on their own with no ability of engaging them in any conversation in any way, shape or form. So we must understand also how the AU was set up, what really needs to happen, conversations need to come in where the AU can also have sovereignty. AU must be given more powers. Uh, we have a lot of good um, uh, organs that uh, should be ratified in the African Union Parliament, for example. Uh, the uh, the uh, African uh, 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 court, the African court, we need to have those organs to be ratified so they can begin to play their role. But to, to date, they have not yet been ratified. Uh, what is delaying the pro process, I do not know. But I can tell you one thing. If we were to fight from the continental level, the battle would be a lot easier. But as long as we're fighting, it's like a hand fighting with one finger instead of fighting with the whole fist that is where our problems lie that's why i keep All saying right. the berlin conference is alive and well today because as little bitty countries we are constantly chasing our tails and yes my brother the situation in uh cameroon it it, it is uh, my heart bleeds All uh, right, thank you